After that, Katori calmly got into the bath with Kanako. Mm. Oh, yeah, ew. Come on. Kanako also made sure that sure not to meddle unnecessarily, and was very considerate towards K Katori to help her calm down. While I was doing the doll mother's jobs in the kitchen, Katori had gotten out of the bath and came to see me. He looked pretty embarrassed. Thanks for just now! Well, I, uh, it was nothing. I stopped myself from saying something like, that's another one for the door mother's jobs. The reason why I didn't did that just now was not because I'm the door mother. You must have been shocked that I can't get into the bath myself. Um... <laughs> I didn't know how to answer and Katori left me behind and went back to her room. Oh, that transition, though. Oh my god, we're getting the sneak peek. Hello, sis. No, it's nothing. I'm not crying. Um, it's about school. That thing we were talking about before. Yeah, yeah. I've made up my mind. Oh my god. Extend the little wings which fly in the sky high. The little wings that fly in the sky high. Stand up. I do that every time. Alright. Hit him in that way! Leave it to me! At a Gia signal, I ran ahead to the block. Yeah. At a Gia signal, I ran ahead to block the cat's escape route. Tortilla Shell Cat. Hmm. I hope I spelled that right. Oh, what a little cutie. Okay. Uh, here we go. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> okay. Meow. Aji and I blocked the stray cat's path and had searched for the third route. And there was. Oh. <laughs> Come here, kitty! There was Katori, as she made an almost sickeningly cheerful smile. That's so sickening. See? I've got those anchovies that you like, and there are so many of them. Now that where, now that's how, now that's how to talk to a cat. Sorry, dangles an anchovy, which captivates the cat. Yeah. However, as expected of a stray cat, it won't let down its guard easily. Katori, you're the thicker weapon. Gulp. Katori nods and takes out a small fishing rod. An anchovy hangs on the end of the line. Meow. Look, look! Dangle, dangle. Yeah. Just like a blessing descending from heaven, the anchovy draws the stray cat's attention. With Katori's skillful waving of the rod, she was, <laughs> she was almost literally really the cat water with the anchovy. Holy crap, Siri! You scared the crap out of me. One sec. I don't know if you heard that, but Siri just started talking to me. It's like, I can't do that right now. It's like, I don't need to do anything, bitch. Come on, come on! Meow, meow! Just as the cat reaches out its paw, Katori times the pulling away of the anchovy so that the cat cannot reach it. It was... It really was a little bit mean. Eventually, the cat, running out of patience, used its last resort. Meow! Jump. The cat jumped onto Katori's lap all by itself. Oh, I've got you! Meow! Amazingly, the cat settled into Katori's arms. Alright, the plan was a big success! I can't believe it fell for such a stupid plan. I felt like saying, come on, stray cat, you can do better than that. Hehe, <laughs> <laughs> good kitty! Katori shows a side that we'd never been see it never seen before, yeah. I smiles affectionately while stroking the cat. The cat seems like he didn't really enjoy being stroked, but he's focused on the large amount of anchovies nearby, so it looks like he's not planning on running away. I'd like a picture of this cat. You're cute, aren't you? You're a good boy, aren't you? Munch, munch. Meow! This cat is quite beautiful, Katerik is a stray. Hello there! I try to start stroking him too. All girls like cats. Is it okay if I stroke him too? 
Meow. See, this cat's not scared. Well, he went through so much trouble to catch him. I gotta let him go now. Mm, but I like cats too. It seems a bit unfair. What's next? Next is... I open the notebook, just check. Things I wanted. Oh, we're doing a bucket list. Oh god. It's the list of bullet points that Katori has right now. Notebook. First of all, stroke cat. Stroke cat has been completed. We are now in the middle of clearing Katori's list of things she still has left to do. As Ajiri and I look at the notebook, Katori looks looks at us sideways, <laughs> but not with suspicion. How did the situation occur? To answer that, we need to go back to this morning. Oh god, really? This morning, I was in two minds as to whether or not I should return to the withdrawal notice that I picked up to a trifle owner. Of course, she should give dropped items back to the owner, but if I did that, it seems that she would disappear from here. So I didn't give it back. <laughs> if that's what she wants to do, I have no reason to stop her. But I was hesitant for some reason. So I was walking back and forth along the hallway, but... Katora, who was wearing her uniform, picked her head out of her ring. She was furtively checking the situation out her head. Ah! As her eyes emerge, she slams the door shut. Why is she acting so suspiciously? Yatori is always doing something suspicious, but there is definitely something behind her behavior just now. I concealed myself in the dining hall for a while. I'll wait ten minutes. Hat appears from the little door at the bottom of Katori's bedroom door. Ooh, he's scouting! I took a look around the entrance way, then came into the dining hall. Quack. Shh. Hagger Bask goes back into Katori's room. There was no one there. Quack quack. All right. What does she mean by all right? Katori came sneaking out of her room. She took a peek into the dining hall just in case. I hid behind the counter. Looks like no one's here. If that guy catches me, he'll make me. He'll yeah. He'll make such a fuss. When she says that guy, it feels like she's talking about me. Oh no, I could be the other guy that's been working in the doll's dormitory. Vittori is wearing her uniform, but she isn't carrying her bag. In the entranceway, she opens up her notebook and looks inside. I sneaked up behind her. I did this before, so today... Are you going to skip school again today? <laughs> Eek! Katori jumped, let out a scream, and threw the notebook. What, 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 what are you doing here? But I just checked. That's why you should stop sending a duck to scout for you. As I picked up the notebook that she dropped, I looked at the open page. Things I want to do. This is the page I saw before. Get my notebook back! Could it be that you were planning to do all of this before you quit school? Eh. Seems like I was spot on. Yeah. I'm going to finish all the things remaining today. That's enough. Now give it back. I handed back the notebook. Then I follow Katori as she is about to leave. Why are you following me? I'm going to help. Well, why? You must be tough by yourself, right? Katori looks at me like I'm an idiot. While we stop in front of the door, the doorbell rings. I'm gonna be at this time. Good morning! Ajia. <laughs> oh, you're both here? What did you come here for? Well, I... Uh... Ajia pulls me towards her and whispers into my ear. Yesterday something felt a bit strange, and I thought she might be starting to skip school again. So she came all the way here to ask Katori to go to school with her? Bullseye. Seriously? Yeah, the... Ooh. Yeah, the truth is that... How should I explain this? Katori, I'm just gonna borrow your notebook. I go back to Katori and take the notebook. Ah, hey! That's a bit of a dick move, just like, hey, give me a shit! Using that, I explained the situation to Ajia. I explained that today she wants to finish the things I want to do. There's that is written in a nice in this notebook. I didn't tell her about Katori's plan to quit school. This looks like a big job. Ajia grinds a little as she looks at the list. That's right! This is why I'm taking a day off school! I guess that's. I guess that's the only way! Question mark! Hello, to! And then we found a cat. That's just how Ajia and I ended up going with Katori against Delicious to clear the things remaining on the wisp one by one. 
By the way, as far as us urgently searching for members of the club goes, last night we came up with a possible prospect. That's why we're going with Katori. Oh, nice. That's enough! May I just call you two? Said Katori while shrugging the cat. But we don't listen. Okay! Next is Pythagoria at its horse house! Okay, I pointed at red. Struck that cat to the big dog and then I would! It's really scary, but it might be unexpectedly friendly. If possible, I'd like to ride around on its back. On the list. Uh, the Ito, Ito, Ito family are rich and have a well-known and very large dog called Pedigree that roams around freely in their garden. When we were kids, it was rare to see such big dogs, and we would often watch him lumbering around their spacious lawn. I'd like to ride around on its back. So far, I've lifted up Katori on two occasions. Both times, she was light as a feather. Well, perhaps that's exaggerating slightly, but she was really light. If it's Katori, she should be able to... Yeah, she should just be able to do it. She is a Saint Bernard, after all. Pedigree is a Saint Bernard. They're pretty huge. Well, seriously considering Katori's silly idea, we headed to Wotito's house. Ito's house. It's a windmill. <sighs> I've started to sweat! said the G as she put the baggage down on the grass. But there's a breeze here, which feels good. Today is dry and sunny, and the temperature isn't that high. It's quite hot in the sunlight, but there's a nice breeze. Yeah. I throw a sports drink to a G. Oh, thanks! There's one for you too, Katori. I take some orange juice from the convenience store bag and pass it to Katori. Oh, thanks! Do you want to sit down here? Huh? Oh, um... Ajia, give me, give me a hand, would you? Ajia, who looks like she's enjoying a sports drink, gets up and comes over. What are you doing? What are you doing? I want... Yeah, I want to put you down here. Th there's no need! There's no need! Oh, I see! I leave lifting up a Gatori to Ajia and tell her how to do it, while I give a hand from the side. Seriously! Like, seriously! You're basically taking control of... A disabled girl. You're just like, oh, do you want to sit on the grass? I'm like, no, that's fine. She's like, nah, fuck it. I'm gonna pick you up, bitch. He didn't even ask. He's just like, <coughs> no, he didn't cough. He's like, I'm gonna put you on the ground, bitch. Whatever. I'm sure she likes it. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh thanks. Thor sits down on the grass and looks comfortable as she stretches back. <laughs> the face of comfort, Todd. <laughs> the face of comfort. Ah, my butt is getting a bit hot! <laughs> it seems that wheelchairs can get quite hot in the summer. Okay, time for lunchboxes! Uh... The time is about 12.30. Now I'm hungry. It's exactly the time for a lunch break. We spread out the lunchboxes that we brought and the juice and the snacks we brought from the convenience store. We don't have a sheep, but it feels like we're having a picnic. Okay, let's eat! Okay! I had made mine in Katori's lunchboxes, and Ajia had brought her own. Munch, munch! Munch, munch, sorry. Munch, munch, sorry. Okay, well, you've got a burger, Katori. I want to try for my spring roll. Sure. Alright! Ajia looks like she's enjoying the burger that she got by trading, and she wants it down. I... I... You're cooking... You're good at cooking, aren't you? It makes me lose confidence as a woman. Alright. Your mom's good at cooking, though, isn't she? No, no, I can't be compared to a career housewife. <laughs> Tori's face seemed to say that she really... that she wasn't really suited to this situation, and she quietly ate her lunch. However, she didn't look as irritated as she was before. And she uh, either had a notice or was pretending not to have noticed, and carried on behavior, uh, behaving the same way she always does. This is the first time I've skipped school! The only time I thought that I wanted to take a day off was on the day of the injection. Oh god, injections, you know, I was pretty good at injections, mate. They didn't really hurt at all. But if you hang out with your friends like this, maybe it's okay sometimes. Said Ajia playfully. She seems quite excited about skipping school for the first time. Ooh, she's a rebel now. If your mum finds out, she's totally gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Ajia's mother doesn't hold back when she gives her daughters a kick in the ass. Okay, so it's a literal term. 
Gotta kick her in the ass. I've been kicked too, many times. Like when Najia and I got caught playing tricks. This is an odd topic to go to. So this one time I got kicked in the ass so hard, it was like, ugh. Those kicks are big, heavy, and painful. That's why you got that Okay, got it. She kicked me too for something like this. Uh, I say that, but I don't want to, her to worry necess unnecessarily. Hey, what's next? We all look at the notebook. We managed to finish five of them this morning. As for pedigree, the Itos recognized Ajia and they let us into the garden. We were not able to have her ride on his back, but Katori gave pedigree a hug, so we counted that as a success. In the end, it was quite tough for her to roll around and play with him. It sucks that we can't see this. I mean, I would have liked to see pedigree. Pedigree probably weighs more than Katori. On top of that, he licked her all over her face and she looked like she was full of emotion. Go to Cafe Flax! Ajia reads out from the list. Where's that? It's over there in Windy! Uh, I don't need to go there! Katori, who had suddenly gone red, drew a line through that entry with a red pen. Ajia whispers into her ear. Is there someone you want to go there with? No, it's just your misunderstanding! Question mark. Something was said to Katori, and now she's desperately trying to cover something up. What could it be? It's, it's quite a grown-up cafe. It's run by a famous patis, uh, and has delicious sweets. Mm, do you want to go there? I, I said no. It was just a misunderstanding. I just heard someone talking about it at school, so I thought it sounded good, that's all. I didn't know about that kind of place. Is it a brothel? That kind of place? It's not just a normal cafe. It's in the couples, so there are tons of customers like that. The young woman in Kasakura go there on at the young woman in Kasakura go there on dates. So going there is a kind of status symbol. I really didn't know about it. Pow! Tori points at me. She's strongly denying it, but it's not like I really have any suspicions about it. Why don't you go with I? <laughs> What, 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 what are you talking about? I didn't write anything about that. <laughs> Victoria had gone red and was looking down. Uh, well, I don't mind. Is that place expensive? The cakes are about 800 yen per piece. The tea is about the same price. That is a little steep, and she looks rather happy about it. The homemade mille fiole. It's one of the most popular things on the menu, and it's really delicious, apparently. That's 1,300 yen. For one cake? I guess it is in the same place as the supermarket that sells high-grade marbled meat for 2,980 yen for 100 grams. But doing the work of the door mother, I can get a small allowance from my, from my mom, so... Next month will be okay. I just told you I don't need to go! I just heard from someone that it's a trendy shop that sells delicious cakes and tea. As for going there on a d d day with a boy, I never said I wanted to do that. Why have I been doing a cheers voice for the whole time? I've been oh god, I screwed up real bad. I never said that. Um, it must be important because she said it twice. I was overwhelmed by her vigor and nodded in agreement without saying anything. Alright, that's the end of that conversation. As she once suddenly dropped the subject, she used the pen to thoroughly blot out that entry. Hmm, there we go. Might have bled through the other side of the page. Oh god. Hi, you are, you look a little disappointed, don't you? Uh, no, I don't. You have a sweet though, don't you? Yeah. I would get disappointed about something like that. Besides, did I really look disappointed? Actually, you cleared away the lunchboxes and opened a bag of snacks. We poured a lot at because it felt like we were going on an excursion. Well, do you eat some per preach preach pray pray snacks? She takes another look at the notebook after Katori had finished blotting it out. Speaking of which, we were in the middle of talking about what to do next. Hey, what's that? Ajia was looking at the entry at the number one spot on our list. It was written much bigger than the other entries. I want to pass through. I want to pass through the Passions of Cloud. Yeah, I thought that was quite mysterious too. What is that? 
Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I'm not the one who wrote this. Atticatory while crunching the pray pre pray it preach snacks that RG had given her. Now that she mentioned it mentions it, the handwriting is different. Eat as eat as much Hagen Dutch as I want. And someone have written a nice uniform writing. Compared to the meculiously mech neat handwriting, I would pass through the passage of class. It was written in a way that seemed bold and spirited. So I wrote it! The owner of the notebook. It was already written in there when I found it. There are a few entries written in this unbridled fashion, and below are the main memory entries. Katori had added to it, considering from what considering from what yeah, someone else had written. You found it, what do you mean? I found it in my room when I when I came to Flying Fish Manor. Calling it is a manes. It was hidden it was hidden in a gap between the shelves. So this isn't your notebook then? That's right. Maybe it's a diary of someone who lived there before. When she says that it's a diary, I feel hesitant to just go ahead and open it. Had Katori read it? Does that mean you continue to write in someone's diary? Without thinking, of Jay and I both made a face like, why? While Katori remains quiet. I don't think that it's because it would be a shame to waste that the unused pages there. The thing that I was more concerned with this was, I want to pass through the passage of cloud. What is a passage of cloud? Maybe the cloud layer. If it's clouds we're talking about. I look up. There's a blue sky and a few clouds. Then, a giant windmill. The windmill blades are moving around slowly in the wind. They look a lot like the wings of a glider. Uh. <sighs> okay then, next is donate blood. Let's all go and have our blood taken. <laughs> 